What does the greatest film of all time look like? Once a decade for 50 years, despite many other acclaimed international films mounting strong challenges, Sight and Sound's Greatest Films poll told the world it looked like this. If I hadn't been very rich, I might have been a really great man. Citizen Kane, for many, was cinema's perfect ambassador, representing Hollywood's global cultural influence, legitimising the maverick genius auteur theory. And by both celebrating and cautioning against rich white male power, it reflected a dominant capitalist patriarchal ideology, the bedrock of the film industry and modern society itself. I make my promises now if I weren't too busy arranging to keep them. In 2012, Kane and Wells were finally usurped by Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo. Its voyeuristic obsession storyline, a neat approximation of cinephilia. Both films are clearly masterpieces, but aren't both ultimately works by established canonical filmmakers of the kind that have been heralded for decades. If we look at 2012's top 10 films, it's an international selection, with films from Japan, France, Italy and Russia. Silent films and documentaries sit alongside Hollywood classics. This top 10 were all made in the much celebrated golden age 40-year period from 1928 to 1968. In 2022, the picture seems significantly different. Five of these films have dropped out of the top 10. In the rain. Yes. Instead of the most recent film being 34 years old, now two films are from the 21st century. And two others were made by female directors. The same total of films made by women as appeared in 2012's entire top 100, including the new number one. Chantal Ackerman's Jean Dielman, 23 Quai de Commerce, 1080 Bruxelles. A three hour, 21 minute, aesthetically and politically radical work. The film focused exclusively on the repetitive domestic life of a Belgian housewife, from peeling potatoes to sex work. A pointed critique of power imbalances and social servile constructs. It helped redefine the female gaze and rejected established cinematic norms. That's quite a change. If there's one overarching narrative from this year's poll, it's the rise of women directors. 11 films in the top 100, nine of the top 15 new entries, and many making remarkable advances up the chart, or even entering for the first time as you can see by comparing their positions in 2012 to 2022. The Independent. Je laisse volontiers tomber les épis de blé pour prendre la caméra. The Avant-Garde. The Experimental. The Genre Reworkings. The Period Drama. From those women directors now gone and perhaps underappreciated in earlier years, to those still working today and redefining the parameters of the art form. No doubt, greater emphasis and attention on awareness for equality and diversity has played a role here. There are also more films with women at the centre of their narratives. The poll also significantly features more directors of colour. In 2012, only one black director featured in the top 100. In 2022, there are seven. Queer cinema too has a greater representation. And of course, there is overlap amongst these previously marginalised groups. It's impossible to imagine these results happening at any other time in film history. One key factor in this increased diversity is the hard work throughout the industry, from archives who have restored these films, to film festivals, cinemas, DVD and Blu-ray labels and streaming platforms who have brought these films to wider audiences. Another major factor is surely the broad inclusivity and amplifying effect of social media. A wider range of critics and film lovers are now far more vocal and able to influence awareness, curation and screening choices. This can, of course, work both ways. You know what happens to nosy fellows? Alongside new entries in the top 100, 
it's fascinating to see what has dropped out. And some choices surely reflect the controversial nature of the filmmakers and the fact that voters' selections are now more than ever subject to rigorous scrutiny. With 24 films newly appearing in the top 100, the rate of change is faster than ever before. More specifically, so is the accelerated speed of acceptance into the canon. From two 21st century films in 2012, in 2022, now there are nine. These include one from 2016, one from 2017, and two from as recently as 2019. It's worth noting that this trend isn't unprecedented. The very first poll in 1952 was topped by Bicycle Thieves, released just four years earlier. And in 1962, La Ventura came second, two years after its release. But the scale of acknowledging contemporary films as classics is yet another sign of how much this year's Sight and Sound Greatest Films poll is repositioning what we think of as cinema's canon. Bring on 2032.